Hello friends, in the previous video we have seen how to integrate Redux form inside the sign up page. Now we will see how to validate the form. So in the previous video we left that part, in this video we will see. So for validation we simply have to create a single function which is const validate equal to a function which will automatically get all the values when we will pass it and this function we have to pass here itself that's it so it's a kind of object so it will go like this but since it's ES16 so if the name and property if the name if the property and the value variable is same then we can simply use a single property and then we have to create a object which is uh, errors it will be an object which is empty and simply we have to return it R -E -T -Q -R, and return errors yeah that's it so this is the basic structure of a validation function and now we simply have to check the values if values dot name which is this so if values dot name is not there then errors dot name equal to name is re q u i r a d required huh. yeah so before submitting we simply let's check if this part is working fine so how to check so here is the text input here we can create a text field txt text txt text let it be like this then so the error should not come until it is test oh, okay let's put it here simply and check so i think something is there but we can't able to read okay yeah so as you can see name is required when there is no name right <laughs> so we can do we'll load this file uh, load the app actually what the fuck is happening with this uh, the data is not going anywhere so there is some problem with it while refresh let's do the hard refresh sorry reload the data should go away but the data is not going anywhere it is still there the feed should be empty okay so let's find the solution for this redux form reset on refresh react native use handle submit prop instead of passing your own function to own submit directly also please note that we refer usage support okay so let's do one thing uh, we have this redux persist so re dux redux persist i think it is persisting the data that is the reason so we'll go here and there is a property which is whitelist you will see whitelist it is an array blacklist and whitelist there are two things so if you will whitelist the reducer it will persist if you will black blacklist the reducer it will never persist so for now the whitelist will be blank so we don't want to persist anything but still the data is persisting let's do one thing let's 
rebuild the app but if we'll rebuild then also data will persist so first we will uninstall and then we will check so all the data has been gone now rebuilding the application So yeah, so when we were doing the validation, it was working. But uh, yeah, so as you can see, when there is no name, also there is this text coming. So we will design the text, then you will get the better understanding. Style, style, style equal to style. Style dot error txt text. Now we will create this style here color equal to hash FFF FFF so the color will be white enable live reload F color is white font size 16 instead of this font size let it 12 name is required okay fine then PA padding horizontal how much 16 what do you say and I think this is fine let's give some vertical padding also or let's give a padding bottom adding bottom how much 8 yeah that's what we wanted as of now uh, font size 12 is too small make it 14 yeah so this is fine but as you can see it is taking this space this space and also it is visible once we have not done anything so there is this touched also when you will touch it then only the data will print if touched then this or you can see this so now we will see mm, yeah now I have touched it but I'll remove it to here and I'll try to submit it yeah so then name is required that's what we wanted it came for everything it came for everything okay okay so I touched this one also that is why it came for everything and uh, then we have to do I think this mo this is fine so let's do once more yeah so as you see the data has been gone in the password now I will test and I'll did this touch is coming for everything okay so it means submit is required and the data will come for this also uh, but it should be like it is required or not uh, how that we can do okay we'll see how to check if the field is not required then this uh, error should not come we'll see we'll see how to do that okay so this will be for email this will be for password so here email will go here email will go and here instead of name email is required here sswrd password here pssswrd password w o r d pssswrd password actually what happened is like we have uh, used this text input inside this one so once this is valid means once we are doing the sign up this touched is getting true and it is rendering this text so since we have done for only the name we did only for the name that is why this name is here 
and that is why it is not here and it is not here so now since we have done for everything if I will do this ok so application has not been refreshed man yeah so all the data has been gone now we will check if the hack we used for this is fine or not so still it is touched but anyhow there should be no error uh, where to check where to check where to check here okay so it is not running debug chase remotely and one more thing we can do here if touched not only touched but if error is also there then it should come so now we did this and suppose I am doing entering the email and doing this yeah so the problem has been solved now I will do this password and it has been gone so that was the one solution and yeah and I did this and I did this and the data came and when I will refresh it sorry when I will refresh this refresh is not working fine so we will do this way the data will go away from the form so the hack which it is not a hack actually that was the problem so when it is whitelist blank means it is not storing any of the reducers data so as I told you earlier you can store the data you can store means you can store the complete state and you can also choose which state you want to uh, what do you say store in the persist in the redux persist yeah so since whitelist is empty so it is not storing any data if I will add my reducer name so the reducer name is auth reducer auth dot reducer dot okay we can find the reducer name inside this this one so this is the actual reducer name that we will use everywhere if I'll pass it here then it will store the data of auth reducer all the time so let's do it we want to store the data also one more thing in our auth dot reducer what is that thing is we have to store the token also so t o k n token token as of now is null blank because this token will be always there to get the user's data so the validation has been done the token has been done added added this is fine and yeah one more thing so for suppose you have multiple forms which is not one two three four five six so we will create a utility function which is will be, which will be the single function because uh, there is a convention there is a concept of dry in a programming dry means don't repeat yourself so we will create that function which will be the single function and we will pass just the parameter of values in that function and it will validate the form Means if you have multiple forms it will validate it accordingly we will use the loops like for loop or something for object also there is a loop which is foreign so that we will take care of it that we will use so for now since we have two forms or uh, let's let's keep it like this as of now then the second step what I what I wanted to do is validation has been done okay okay so let's check sign up validation is not there and there is no object coming here which is fine uh, and uh, yeah so I told you we, we have to create a service for that we'll create a file folder cr v s e r v i c service slash api dot js so there might be a file inside this okay so this is also a folder I thought it will create a file but it created a folder so we'll remove that folder from here and we'll create a file which is api dot js it will be a function so first we'll do const base b a s e base url which is something 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 like it will be like uh, base url will be like http colon slash slash 
www.webapi.com and then this is for dummy this is not actual actual api endpoint so we'll create a function const c o n s t const but before const we have to use xport export const api is equal to a function this function will take multiple things first it will take the url then m e t h o d method then body then h a d r as headers since method will make it null for now because we don't have anything and body headers will make it an empty object and we'll refresh the application it will not work then we have to check if const url const uh, what do you say and p e o i n t endpoint equal to base url dot con cat url you will get the url here const endpoint now const c u n s t const body which is uh, request body will give the name equal to if body is there if body is there then body then sorry json dot string s t r i n g i f y stringify we put the body otherwise make it an empty object not a problem or null will be fine null yeah third thing is if <coughs> if this method if will create it if method is equal 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 to p o s t post and method is equal 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 to p u t put so if you are sending a data or updating the data then body is required and not body so if there is no body then what we have to do t h r o w throw new error request body r e q u i r e d required request body required okay else yeah one more thing const f e t c h fetch p a r a m sparams equal to an object which have a method and headers i think yeah so any request at least methods and headers are required and one more thing if there is this body then fetch params dot ca headers and then c o n t n t content t y p type equal to a p p l i c a t application slash json and i think uh, if there is body then we have to do this uh, we have to add a header if mm, i think this is correct anything else we have to do if there is a body um, <laughs> let's let's do like this only then we will create a fetch promise so const fet fetch so mic fetch promise equal to and this function will be a async function a s y n c async function so it will return a promise 
so here we can use await await no 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 here await is not required uh, await is required somewhere else I'll tell you where fetch so first part will be the URL and second part will be the fetch params so fetch params are method and body yeah so we have not added the body inside this fetch params so we will add here should be the request body or if body is coming from here then if body is coming from here request body yeah correct so if request body is there and if request body is null yeah that also we can do then the we have to concatenate dot body equal to request body now we have done uh, that's what I was forgetting that's why uh, at that time I was confused yeah so here this endpoint will go which is the base URL and uh, the endpoint and here this object will go inside this we have a methods header and the body if there is so first thing is fine now we will create a timeout promise timeout P R O M I S E. Timeout promise will be new. P R O M I S E promise, which is a function inside it. Here will be P S R E S O L V. Is R E S O L V. Will be R E J C T reject. So, what we have to do? We have to use a set T time out function inside this simply we have to do re jct reject that's it and here 10 seconds oh uh, this is one second this is 10 seconds so i think we are done and then we have to do const cunst const so this we have done timeout promise if the if we do not get the response in 10 seconds then it should cancel the it should reject the promise so that the logic is and uh, how to use this one is res p o n s c response equal to we have a function which is promise dot r a c e race so it will check uh, among all the promise which promise is coming first and then it will return the data of that promise so we have two promises here first is this one and I think it takes an array second is this one let's check how fetch promise.race works so we'll go here and we will check promise.race in the MDN meanwhile yeah and here we will return RESPONSC response and then it has been done so here let's take this function inside a try catch block so that if any error comes it should not here if any error comes thro throw th new error and here pass the e so we don't know what is the error in future promise dot race takes a promise dot race yeah so it takes an array of promises so I think the API function has been done we will create another function which will be fetch promise export const fe fetch ero misc promise <laughs> this will also be a function and here URL will go here METHOD method will go what else we are digging here body so here body will go if body is there then headers HEA headers will go then token TO KN token is null as of now LOA DR loaders loader is false FA let's see and then PRO 
MISC promise return -E type which is JSON for now so these many things we will pass here and Y and yes let's create some space yeah then we will again create a try cache block tr y and since we are doing promise dot race so i think we have to do await here because it's a promise so here since he is using then then function we don't want to use so we have used await now here mm, yeah const headers equal to blank uh, I think so we can pass the header from here itself or we have to take the header from there <sighs> we can pass the header from here we don't want to take from anywhere else because in the header mostly we will pass the token nothing else so let's create a const header which is empty if token is there if tokn token tokn token is there then header and the name of the token which we have to pass is x auth x auth equal to token that's it headers is done that is fine then what then what then what then what yeah so then we have to call the api respons -E response equal to api inside this api first parameter it is taking is url so we will pass this url here second parameter is taking is methods we will pass here third parameter it is taking as body so we will pass here fourth parameter it is taking is headers so we'll pass here and we will see this loaders and pro return promise style later that this also we can pass here but keep it as it is as of now and uh, yeah so a y and c promise sync a w a i t of it this is what we can do now we have to check yeah one more thing we have to pass is uh, status code so if it is 200 or something yeah so if let's check response dot status is equal 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 to status code okay then what we have to do const res response uh, what we can check const okay let's give it name result re or res p o n s c response b o d y response body response body is equal to response body a w a i t await response dot json so this will again return a promise but since we are checking if promise return type is json then we have to do json so okay keep it save it for later we'll see how to use this one later because right now we don't have the return type which is a text because there are so many return types are there so if you see pro mic promise return type so there are so many things typescript no i think we'll use json then in javascript then you will body.json so then only you will see how to use response.json dot then so there are multiple things that we can do instead of json we can use text also uh, fetch json example fetch json live request where to see body yeah so here you can see there oh my god so there are multiple ways array buffer blob form data json text so these are the methods that you can use 
so that i was thinking of if if any text we have to use or anything else so since we are returning json from there itself so we'll use this one and if response body if response dot status is equal to status code response body is equal to await this and simply we will return return and return response body and else we are returning here so else is not required we will simply throw 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 the response okay this finally final block is not required here we will remove and then we can do in catch e is there will again throw error let's give it a name e r r o r error so it will be error okay okay so this is a this is a very long video and we created a bunch of functions means couple of functions actually now we will see how to use this fetch promise and uh, let's give a fetch api name don't give a fetch promise api so we'll see in the next video how to use this fetch api so uh, uh, for this sign up login get user and all those things because uh, why i have created these functions are uh, if you are going to use this fetch api this one fetch api um, means if you are doing multiple calls multiple in the sense one call for sign up one call for login one call for getting the profile one call for updating the profile so so many codes i think the, these these many codes and error handling codes you have to write again and again so since we have not handled the error here but the when the code will grow each and every place you have to write the error handling code so what we did is we created a function in which we will use all the we will oh, what do you say uh, we will test all the cases of the errors also and um, of the response types also so it will be json or text or anything so with the parametering uh, concept we'll do all those complex logics inside this functions so that will be easy for us also and that will be easy for you also because since if you want to do any api call in the then you have to simply use uh, this response equal to sorry for the spelling mistake i'm not going to correct it you will simply you will pass like you user slash create this will be your url then method will be simply post post body will be some body which will be this and then status code so you are getting status code 200 if token is there then you can pass the token here and loader if you want uh, if you want a loader for this api call uh, means when you are doing the api call then uh, until the response comes the loader should uh, appear on the screen then you can pass it as tru true so and uh, there is nothing else so we simply use and here the simply json object will come then you can log you can uh, dispatch anywhere directly dispatch uh, something we can, you can use here so you need not to do this chaining again because simply this returns a promise so we'll do the await but yeah so this will reduce this step one more step which we are doing here await response type and all and error handling we can manage here as i told you earlier so for this video I think I'm done. I'm tired. <laughs> now we will see how to use this fetch API uh, for the sign up, login, or anything else in the next videos. Till then, bye bye. Take care and don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share. Give me the feedbacks. Let me know what else I can do. Let me know what else do you want to know. Bye bye.